Chapter 12, section 12.4, we're going to relate the boiling point of a liquid to atmospheric pressure, vapor pressure, and the strength of intermolecular forces. We're also going to explain why changing altitude affects boiling point of a liquid. So first, we need to know what is the normal boiling point and freezing point of water. So the normal boiling point of water is going to be 373.15 Kelvin and 100, or 100 degrees Celsius. The freezing point, the normal freezing point of water is going to be 273.15 Kelvin and 0 degrees Celsius. So make sure that you memorize the normal boiling and freezing point of water because it can change depending on atmospheric pressure. So what is vapor pressure exactly? If you have a liquid whether it's being heated to boil or whether it's just evaporating, either way, when you have a liquid change into the gas phase, the gases that exit the liquid exert a force known as vapor pressure. So these are vapors and they exert a force known as vapor pressure. Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure so when you have enough gas particles escape the liquid to the point where they equal the atmospheric pressure, then a liquid has reached its boiling point and begins to boil. When the vapor pressure coming out of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure or external pressure coming down on the liquid, that's the point in which the liquid will boil and whatever temperature the liquid's at is going to be known as its boiling temperature. So if my atmospheric pressure were 88 kilopascals, for example, then the vapor pressure has to reach 88 kilopascals before the boiling will occur. So because these two are equal, boiling occurs, and the temperature at which that happens is the boiling point. So in this case, at 88 kilopascals, this liquid is boiling at 74 degrees Celsius arbitrarily. So if you change the atmospheric pressure, that's going to alter or change the amount of vapor pressure necessary to boil, which would also affect the temperature in which the, temp the liquid will be boiling at that time. So intermolecular forces are inversely related to vapor pressure, and this is why. Because intermolecular forces are like the glue that holds these particles together. And if the glue is really strong, it's very hard for these molecules to escape each other and turn into vapors. And so vapor pressure is really low whenever your intermolecular forces are strong. But if the forces are weak, then these particles can escape very easily and very quickly. And so when the forces are weak, vapor pressure is high. So here are two good answers to this question that we came up in class. The vapor pressure relies on the escape of particles from the intermolecular forces of the liquid. Weak intermolecular forces, more can escape, thus a higher vapor pressure. Another way of saying the same thing, there is a low vapor pressure when there are strong intermolecular forces because it takes more energy to break the bonds and to break the forces would be more accurate. Vapor pressure is inversely related to boiling point. Why? So if you have a really high vapor pressure, so like let's say that the atmospheric pressure coming down is um, at sea level. And so let's say my vapor pressure coming down is at one atmosphere. So the vapor pressure has to equal the atmospheric pressure in order for boiling to occur. So if you have a really high vapor pressure, so let's just say these vaporize very easily and very quickly and have a very high vapor pressure, then they're going to reach the boiling point really fast. And if they reach the boiling point fast, then it's going to be a low boiling point. So if you have a high vapor pressure, then you're going to have a low boiling point, which is why they are inversely related to each other. Opposite of that, if you have a very low vapor pressure, then you're going to have a very high boiling point. Meaning, if it's really hard for these particles to escape the liquid, 
then it's going to take a long time for the vapor pressure to equal the atmospheric pressure that's coming down. And if it takes a long time to build up enough vapor pressure in order to match the atmospheric pressure, you're going to have a very high boiling point. So when there's a low vapor pressure, there's a high boiling point which occurs because of it. Boiling point is directly related to intermolecular forces and why is that the case? Well, if you remember intermolecular forces are the glue. So if my forces are really strong, again, it's going to take a really long time for the boiling point to for the vapor pressure to equal the atmospheric pressure. So if the forces are strong, then it's going to take a really high temperature before they break apart enough to equal the atmospheric pressure. So if there's a high boiling point, the intermolecular forces are strong, taking a longer time to vaporize, resulting in a low, a low vapor pressure. You could also say, since the vapor pressure is low, so if we're talking about a low vapor pressure, like because the bonds are strong, or the intermolecular forces are strong, since the vapor pressure is low, it's because the forces are strong between the molecules and it will take more heat to break them apart. So the boiling point is going to have to be higher. and It'll take longer for the particles to break away from the intermolecular forces. Okay, what is the effect of changing atmospheric pressure on the boiling point of a liquid? And here we have a graph showing external pressure as it increases. Notice the relationship to boiling point at the bottom it also increases. So this graph is representing a direct relationship. Between. Atmospheric pressure. And boiling point. Now this is very tricky because at one atmosphere, this is at sea level. If you are greater than one atmosphere, then this is considered below sea level. So a lower altitude. And if it's less than one, then this is, must be above sea level where the air is thinner. And so that's going to be at high altitudes. So justify your answer by explaining the boiling point difference between a mountain uh, boiling, trying to boil or reach the boiling point on a mountain resort versus a New Orleans kitchen. And we know that New Orleans is below sea level, which means that it's got an atmospheric pressure that must be greater than one. And a mountain resort is above sea level So it must have an atmospheric pressure that is less than one. So in New Orleans, you might say it's just above one atmospheric pressure. So the boiling point here is going to be above 100 degrees Celsius. And this is for water. And if we were on a mountain, then maybe the atmospheric pressure is here at about 0.85 or 0.8 atmospheres of pressure. And so the boiling point on a mountain is going to be less than 100 degrees. So it's going to boil hotter in New Orleans and boil colder on a mountain rank, or on a, on a mountaintop. So here's your example. The higher the elevation is, the lower the boiling temperature will be. And the higher, the lower the elevation is, the higher the boiling temperature is going to be. And then here's just a little graph showing you various uh, examples and their relative boiling points. So the altitude associated with these locations and then the atmospheric pressure associated with them and then the relative boiling points. And you can see as altitude decreases, the atmospheric pressure increases, which causes the boiling point to increase. Finally, the vapor pressure of a gas is only affected by temperature. So given this example, in a test tube with some water versus a very wide dish with more water than the test tube, which would have a higher vapor pressure? And if they're both at the same temperature, 
then they have the same vapor pressure because only changing temperature can change the vapor pressure. This includes if you have a lid or not on the system. So whether you have what's known as, as, as an open or closed system, either way, vapor pressure is still the same so long as they're at the same temperature. Only changing temperature can affect the amount of vapor pressure.